So these are six inch long toms. So the clay I'm using is very, very soft. And the idea is to throw them as quick as possible. So it's generally a, just a couple of moves. And the idea also is that you use slurry instead of water so that you use only a small amount, just as, just as much as you need so you're not leaving a big pool of water in the bottom of the pot so you don't have to use your sponge so the quick, it's quick work and straight down, the centre and it doesn't really matter if it's not particularly centred because this move here, so you're using that part of your finger centers the top of the pot for you. And at the end of the day, it's only a flower pot. It's not a, a vase but a work of art. All this has to do is hold a plant, do its job, and kind of look pretty. But apart from that, especially when you drop your tools, If you notice, I strike through at the end with the wire twice. Part of that is if there's any water in the bottom of the pot, it's dispelled out of the pot on the second draw through. So thumb down, straight to the wheel head, drawing out, and then collaring in. And that's all in one move. And all the while, your left hand and your thumb is supporting. And then one knuckle up. straight onto the rim. You can see how soft the clay is. So with this clay, you quite often get bits and nodules of quartz or bits of prehistoric root, maybe a bit of lime. And that's kind of all part and parcel, part of the character of the product. You know, this is the same as it would have been made in Victorian times. If you notice, we use mainly metal ribs in flower pots, whereas a lot of studio potters will use wooden ribs. In flower pots, because the clay is generally a bit coarser, wooden ribs would wear out too quick. So usually our metal ribs are made out of stainless steel spade ends. 
but I have quite special ribs. So mine are made unofficially by Jaguar. Or rather, they were made in the Jaguar workshops about 25 years ago. Very kindly. Someone, one of my apprentices, father-in-law, I think it was at the time, made them for me. And then I have another rib, which was made by the artist Linda Brothwell, which was also part of a film, or it was part of a film, for, I think it was BBC Four, a few years ago. So that was a, a film all about craftsmen and tools that we had worn out and things like that that needed repair. So she made me a, a complete new rib in titanium. So titanium lasts a lot longer. So my ribs, for instance, the one that I'm using today, I've used that pretty much daily for the last 25 years since I've had it. Whereas if that was a steel rib, we used to usually have to make new ribs every three years. Whereas that one has actually been with me for an incredible length of time. So it will have done several thousands of pots. So the thing with production throwing is just, it's almost like muscle memory. It's a bit like dancing, so it's a set move, set bunch of moves. You've got to sort of almost memorize them. So a normal working day, making these, if you were in days gone by and working in factories, you'd be making about a thousand of these in a day. Whereas these days, rarely make more than about four or five hundred. I'm old and a bit lazy. So this, this clay is probably about the same consistency as you would make very, very, the very largest pots, which, although it sounds strange, are maybe very, very soft clay. Because you're not actually drawing them up very high, it's maybe working on the width. So with flower pots, you've got sort of pots that are made with, so very tall chimney pots, the clay is quite stiff medium pots, so that's anything from 15 pounds up to 40 pounds is a kind of medium, again depending if it's tall or short, it will either be soft or medium hard, and then small which is all soft.
doesn't really matter if the clock's dance about. Because when you see it and it's finished, it's not going to be moving around, so you won't really notice that it's slightly off centre. And it looks a bit happy when it's dancing. 